All right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. I hope you guys are doing great. And all of you guys know that I love to cook. You've seen a lot of my Taylor Ham Tuesday episodes. And there's nothing better to me than cooking on good old fashioned cast iron. So that's what I got here today. I'm gonna show you guys how I like to season cast iron. Whether you're cooking in your kitchen, you're at your fire pit, you're on the grill, you're at a campsite, this is the way to go. Cast iron is nice, it's clean, and if you season it right, it is uh, better than almost any non-stick cookware. It is, I think, is the best non-stick cookware. But you gotta know how to season it correctly. If you don't, it's a sticky mess, but if you do, right, it's a beautiful dance. I don't know if you guys have seen my beef tenderloin recipe video that I put out. It was part of a Taylor Ham Tuesday, and that is an amazing recipe, and it is essential to have a cast iron pan like this for that recipe to use, you know, out on the campfire there or your grill and searing that steak there in a nice, hot, piping hot cast iron pan. All right. Let's get busy here, and I'm gonna show you how I season these pans. I'm gonna show you how I clean them up here first, and then we're gonna bring them into the oven. Okay, here is a little array of cast iron that I'm going to season today, and I got a little variety here. Here's a nice large flat griddle. It's flat griddle, and it also has the grilling ridges on the other side. I usually always use that flat griddle part there. And then here is a uh, a nice Dutch oven. And as you can see, all these pieces, they have a little bit of rust, uh, right? There's not good seasoning on any of these. And this might be the quality that you would find at a garage sale or if you're picking up some old cast iron. Now here's a classic, right? This is the Griswold cast iron. If you can find Griswold cast iron, definitely pick it up. This stuff goes for a good buck, and if you search around eBay for this stuff, it is quite expensive, All right? I used to have a buddy that just dealt in Griswold, and uh, he told me one time that he sold a pan about this size right here for $3,000. Some of that Griswold stuff gets very rare, and it gets expensive, right? But check out this Dutch oven. Isn't this nice? It has the... Uh, the basting lid here where the condensation comes to the top and then it drips back down on your, your London broil there, right? And your brisket. And, uh, right, you can cook all kinds of stuff in here. Bread. Look at these. Uh, aren't these great? This is for, uh, I use this for making brownies in these. And those just come out great. So all of these are going to get a good coating of seasoning here today. Okay, if you find a piece like this at a garage sale or you get something like this off of eBay, it's got a little bit of rust. Maybe it's got some gook built up on there. The first thing that I like to do in the shop is come in with a wire wheel. Not too aggressive of a wire wheel. This is kind of a fine one. This is also a somewhat fine wire wheel. But I go over the whole surface with a wire wheel, clean everything off. You know, and this is also if you want to start over from scratch with a piece of cast iron, maybe it's not seasoned uh, that good. Maybe it's got a little buildup in areas that you don't want. You can come in with a wire brush and clean it all up. Now I'm going to show you a little bit later. If you buy a new cast iron pan, like a large cast iron pan, it has a very rough surface in the bottom. And I like to come in with a sander and sand that nice and smooth. I like the smooth finish in there for cooking. All right, you see the handle on this pan and you see this ridge? I'm gonna smooth that out so it feels good in the hand. Now, if this was a Griswold pan, I wouldn't do that because you decrease the value if it was a collectible, that type of thing. But this is a generic pan here and I'm gonna make it feel nice and good for me in the kitchen there. So what I'm gonna do is just come in with the flapper disc here and smooth that out a little bit. Thank you. 
See how nice that turned out there? Hit it with the sander and then hit it with the wire wheel after it and now that feels nice and smooth. All right, now if this was a brand new Lodge cast iron pan and it has that real rough bottom, and even if it says that the pan has come pre-seasoned, I like to take that pan and I like to sand the bottom nice and smooth. And I come in just with a random orbit sander like this, and I might work through some grits like 80, 120, 220, and then come in again with the wire wheel. See how nice that pan comes out? Nice and smooth. That's some 220 paper that I have in the sander. And that's great. That's ready for some nice seasoning. Beautiful. All right, now that's the extent that I'm gonna clean this up on the outside. I'm gonna leave some of this on there. I like that old log cabin look, you know, I don't want this thing looking just shiny brand new. The cast iron's got like an old log cabin. Up in the mountains, you're going on the ski trip, right, hunting some bears, kind of nostalgia to it. So when we put our seasoning on here, this is gonna look great. It's a cast iron eight, tight top Dutch oven, Erie, Pennsylvania. It's got the patent number here, the Griswold. Now I just washed all these with soap and water and I'm putting them in the oven to dry off the water before I put on the seasoning. Don't worry if there's a little flash rust that happens, no big deal. Uh, you just want them to be warmed up a little bit so when we put the seasoning on it melts in nice and easily. Okay now while these are still warm coming out of the oven, see I got a towel on the table here to protect the table but I like to season these using Crisco. Now you can use all kinds of different oils. You can use flaxseed oil is a really good one, but uh, you just wanna end up with a nice seasoning and you'll find out through experience what works for you. There's lots of other recommendations out there. This is recommended by the Griswold and Wagner Society and I've been using it for a long time and I think it just works great. So just a very light coating of the Crisco, and I mean a light, light coating, but it is nice to have the steel a little bit warm. So when you're rubbing this on, it works in. You just wanna spread this around. You don't wanna put it too thick or else it's gonna build up. It's gonna get a little bit lumpy. You just want this to be extremely light and you wanna do inside and outside. And so right now I have the oven set to 350 degrees and I kind of have the configuration there of how these are gonna go in the oven. I got some uh, aluminum foil on a tray to prevent any kind of dripping. If you put a light enough coat on here, there won't be any dripping at all. You only get dripping when you put a lot of oil on and it starts dripping all over the oven. You don't want that. Right? You just want to go with a light coat. We want to repeat this process three times. It's going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. And then you turn the oven off. You let these cool down. You know, you can bring these out of the oven. And then you repeat the process again. You wipe these all down. I like to wipe them down 
not when they're totally cool, but you know, they're still a little bit warm. And then I put them back in the oven at 350 degrees for another 45 minutes. And I do the same procedure three times in a row. these all in the oven and again these are going in at 350 degrees for 45 minutes then I'll turn the oven off I'll let them cool to the touch and I'll repeat this process three times okay this is after the first coat and I brought them out and they're just about just warm to the touch and now I'm gonna put another coat on you can see here that these have a little bit of an amber hue going on there a little bit of a straw color and we're gonna go for two more coats because we want uh, good quality on these. We want a nice non-stick surface. So here we go with coat number two. And for coat number two, I'm just gonna do a light coat inside and on the sides. I'm not necessarily gonna do more on the bottoms of the pots. On the lid here, I'll do the whole lid. So here we go, coat number two. All right, now that all the cast iron has been seasoned three times in the oven, now I put them on the cooktop, I heat them up a little bit, and I just put a little splash of olive oil in the pan. And I take a paper towel while the pan's heated there, and I just rub that oil around, and these are ready to roll. All right, everything's looking amazing. Look at this pan, look how nice that pan is. All right? Flapjacks there for Paul Bunyan, right? Beautiful, beautiful. No sticking, no nothing. Perfect. All right, now when you're done cooking, you just wanna turn off the heat, let the pan cool down, right? And just wait until it's just lukewarm. All right, now I bring the pan over to the sink and I never want to use soap to clean this. That's going to strip the oil out of it. So I just give it a splash of water. Right, and I like taking these metal scouring pads here and I just work it around with the tongs. Just like that. Give it a rinse out. And now I bring it back over to the stove. All right, I turn the heat on medium, and I let that dry out the pan of any water that's in the pan. And from here on out, I'm going with olive oil. I'm gonna season the pan from now on, just with olive oil, just give it a little shot, just like that. And I come in with a, a folded paper towel, and just spread this all around. And you gotta be sure to do this every time that you use the pan. And this is just gonna keep on building on that seasoning, building and building. And this is just gonna turn into a beautiful pan. But make sure you season it every time you use it. All right, that's it for our seasoning pans there. I hope you guys are great. I hope you are in great health and you have enough to eat. And I will see y'all soon. All right, right on. Mmm, mmm. That's some good sausage.